Hi, this is Christy from OESD. In this video, we're going to look at how to make an embroidered hooded bath towel. This bath towel is made with the collection called Bath Time Fun, and there are five different sets. There's a frog, a princess, a dog, a kitty, and a monster. You can get these sets separately, or you can get them all together as one collection. Each of the hooded towel sets are made in several pieces and the basic steps for making the hooded towel are to start with making the little dimensional elements and those are made in the embroidery hoop like in this particular project you see the little kitty ears then you stitch the hood details like the face on this kitten then you add the dimensional elements those kitty ears to that hood and then you sew the hood to the towel so let's break that down a little bit further to make the hooded towel, you're going to need some supplies. First, you need a basic bath towel, and an inexpensive towel works fine. In fact, it's a little easier if you use a lightweight towel to make these projects than if you use a really heavy, fluffy towel. You also need a hand towel for the hood, and we'll actually only use half the hand towel to make the hood, and the other half of the hand towel we can use to either make the dimensional elements, uh, like if you see here on this frog, you've got those dimensional eyes, or on the kitten you have the dimensional ears. If you want to make those dimensional elements a different color, like the princess crown or the horns on this little monster, then you'll need a washcloth that's in the color that you want those dimensional elements. For the designs that have eyes, you may need white washcloth to make an applique. So if you want to have separate color eyes, the white background for the eyes, you'll need a white washcloth for that. Then you'll also need an aquafilm topping. There are several parts of this design that are stitched directly onto the towel. And in those cases, we need a topping to help lift the stitches up off of the loops of the towel so that we don't have loops sticking through our embroidered area. So for that, we'll need the aquafilm topping. We'll be using the OESD poly mesh, and that will actually be used on the back side of the dimensional elements. We we'll use a little bit of Aquamesh Plus, which will help to hold everything together when we're sewing those dimensional elements to the hood. And then we'll use Ultra Clean and Tear to carry the hood when we're stitching the details. You'll also find that an adhesive spray like 505 Temporary Adhesive Spray will be really helpful for putting this project together. In addition to your basic supplies, you also need a pair of scissors and some pins as you're putting this project together. Now all of these instructions and your supply list are listed on the PDF that come along with the collection, so you have something you can print out and follow along. We'll use the dog hooded towel as we walk through these steps here. And for that dog hooded towel, we're going to use a separate color, a brown, to make his little ears than the hood which will be white. So we used a washcloth and we just cut four pieces that'll be the front and backs of each of the two ears from a washcloth and each piece just needs to be a little bit bigger than the embroidery design to make that ear. The first step is we'll actually hoop a piece of the OESD poly mesh. We just need one piece and we stitch the first color change. This is a placement for the ear. Next, we'll lightly spray that poly mesh with the temporary adhesive spray and lay our piece of washcloth down over the top of that. If there are any areas to stitch on top of your ear or your dimensional element, you'll then lay a piece of the aquafilm topping over the top of the towel and stitch those elements. So for example, if you're looking at the different animals here, where we have the princess crown or we have the uh, applique section of these kitten ears, those would be done at this point on the top of that element. But for the ears for the dog, there's no elements here. So we can just go on to the next step, which is to take another piece of your washcloth and place it right sides together with the first piece. You'll then stitch the next color change, which will be a seam stitch that's actually going to hold those two layers together. Now we're going to, at that point, be able to take that project out of the hoop and cut it close. You'll need to make two of these if you're doing the 
puppy because he's got two ears. So you'll need to make two of these dimensional elements. When you take it out of the hoop, you're going to cut it pretty close, about an eighth to a quarter of an inch around the seam stitch. And then you need to cut a tab that hangs down below. So you want to leave about an inch below the area where you've got this dimensional element. That's going to give you a tab that you can stick into the hood when we sew these dimensional elements to the hood. However, you can trim the stabilizer right up to the seam stitch line. So you leave the fabric as a tab at the bottom, but you do want to trim the stabilizer right up to that seam stitch line. Now you're going to turn your dimensional elements right side out. So you'll have your element turned right side out. Use a chopstick to turn out any corners or anything like that. If you want to add some dimension to your dimensional element at this point, you can stuff it with a polyester filling. For the ears, we want those to kind of flop, so we don't need to put any filling in these. But for the eyes on the frog or some of the ele other elements, you might want to stuff them with a little bit of polyester filling at this point. So now that we've created the dimensional elements, we're going to set those aside and work on the hood portion of the design. The first thing we need to do to prepare the hood is to cut our hand towel in half. Remember that we're only using half of that hand towel to make the hood. So we're going to fold it so that the short ends of the hand towel are together and cut along that folded edge so that we we'll only have half the hand towel that we're working with. Now let's look at the color changes for the hood itself. Here you're going to see for the dog design that there's a placement stitch for the towel and then there are several color changes that are the details on the dog's face. Then we have the buttonhole which will be the element where we actually add the dimensional elements. To prepare the hood to stitch it, we've cut it in half so we've only got half a hood and now we're going to fold the half that we have left in half and mark the center of it. Here we've just got a pin to hold it the center place. Now we're going to hoop our ultra clean and tear. That's going to be the basis, our backing stabilizer for our hood. So we're going to hoop that and stitch the first color change just on the stabilizer itself, which is a placement stitch for that towel. Then we will lightly spray that ultra clean and tear and place the hood towel on the edge here. So this is the edge, the not cut edge, the finished edge of your towel. And just line that center point up with the center of that placement line. Now what we're going to do at this point is place a piece of aquafilm topping over the entire hood and stitch the elements of the hood. So if you've got applique elements, the face on this dog, or whichever particular hood you're working on, you'll stitch all of the elements and then you'll stitch all the way up to and including the buttonhole elements, which is what we're looking at here. So the buttonhole elements for this particular design were color change number seven. So we're going to stitch up through and including color number seven. And then we're going to take the hoop off the, ma the machine but leave the project in the hoop. We'll place it on our cutting mat and use a craft knife to cut open that buttonhole. So we need to have a slit in that buttonhole. For the dog we're going to have two buttonholes to cut open. For the princess crown there will just be one large buttonhole to cut open. So we're just going to cut that slit with a utility knife. Now what you're going to do is to take that dimensional element, so in this case our ear, and we're going to tuck it in so that the tab part of the dimensional element is going into the buttonhole and out the back side of your hoop. And you'll do that on both sides. Now you're going to flip your hoop over and on the back side of the hoop where you've tucked that dimensional element into the buttonhole, you're going to fold the tabs flat. So you have two tabs, if you'll remember, that you created when you cut out your dimensional element. You're going to fold them flat and then we need to hold those into place on the back of the hoop. 
So what we're using here is Aquamesh Plus. That's a water-soluble stabilizer that has an adhesive backing on it. We're going to place that over the entire area here, flattening those flaps against the back of the hoop and holding it in place so it's not going to shift while we're stitching it in place with the next color change. And we'll want to do that on both of these ears to hold those flaps in place. Now, in addition to that, we also want to add a piece of the poly mesh. So we're going to take a piece of OESD poly mesh. We can lightly spray that and cover the entire back of the hoop. And the reason we're doing that is we're going to then seal in the dimensional element. And if we stuffed it with polyester filling, this poly mesh will help hold that in place so that it's not going to slide out of the back. And it just also gives a nice soft finished edge to the back side of those dimensional elements. So we've covered that entire area with the poly mesh and sprayed it in place and cover and smooth over the whole back of the hoop. Now we're going to place the hoop back on the machine and we're going to do two color changes to hold these dimensional elements or these ears in place. The first color change is going to stitch the bottom of the ears on both ears. So you'll fold the ears up and it'll stitch the bottom of both ears. And you can use a chopstick to help hold that out of the way while it's stitching. If you have a machine that has a foot pedal where you can control the speed with the foot pedal, you might actually want to stitch this color change with your foot pedal so that you can stitch it very slow and watch where the machine is stitching as you sew. Then you will do the next color change flipping this dimensional element to the other side. So you'll stitch this first color change, flip it over, and then it will stitch on the other side of that buttonhole to hold your dimensional element in place. So when you're done on the back side, what you're going to see is a box that completely encloses your dimensional element. So it covers both sides of the buttonhole. So we're looking here at the back side of the hoop. Now at this point you can go ahead and take the project out of the hoop because we've completed stitching it. And when you do, you're going to cut the excess dimensional fabric, so the excess part of the ears and the poly mesh, cut it close to your stitching line because that's all going to hold it in place. That stitching line is going to hold the dimensional element and it holds that poly mesh in place to keep any of the stuffing from coming out. So that's what the back side is going to look like at this point. You can then also tear away any extra stabilizer and if you flip it over this is what the front of your hood is going to look like. So now you've completed the embroidery part of your hood. Now to sew the hood to your towel, what you're going to do is to take the raw edge of the towel, which is the opposite side that you've embroidered, and you're going to pin it to your full-sized towel. And you're going to pin it along the long edge, centered on the long edge of your full-sized towel. Now if we want to have a finished edge where the hooded towel, where the hood of the towel is lining up with our towel, we can actually cover this raw edge that we've cut from our hood. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to pin the hooded area of the towel, the hood, about a quarter inch away from the finished edge of the full towel. So if you look here is the hood and we've shifted it up about a quarter inch away from the finished edge of the full towel. What we're going to do now is to stitch along a quarter inch away from the edge of the raw edge of the hood. So you stitch a quarter inch away here from the raw edge of the hood and then what you're going to do is to fold that finished edge of the towel down over the hood and that way it's going to actually close in that seam and then you'll stitch that folded edge down all the way across the towel. 
Now up to this point our hood that we've made is really just a flap that's hanging on the edge of our towel. So we want to form it into a hood. The first thing we'll do is to fold down the top of the towel of the hood down to match the edge of the towel and then along the edge here where the short edges of the hand towel meet each other we're going to sew just sew a quarter inch or right through the finished bound edge of the towel. And you'll do that on both sides so that you end up having a pocket along the top of the towel. Now take that whole project and flip it over. And to turn it into a hood that will fit the head a little bit nicer, you'll just fold in the corners of that pocket, fold them toward the edge where the hood matches the towel and then again just sew a straight line across that folded edge which will hold all of those layers together to form that hooded shape. Each of the bath sets also has a bath mitt design so you can make a mitt to match your towel. The mitts are really simple to make. First you need a hand towel in the color that you want to match your project. You need the aquafilm topping, poly mesh, which will serve as our base stabilizer for the project, our temporary adhesive spray, and then you need binding to finish the bottom edge. The first step in the bath mitt is to simply hoop a single piece of the OESD poly mesh stabilizer by itself and stitch the placement line. Next, you'll lightly spray that poly mesh with temporary adhesive spray and place one piece of your hand towel down over the top of that. Then you'll put a piece of the aquafilm topping over the top of this area so that you can have a, the topping there to be able to lift the stitches from the loops. Without the topping, the stitches will sink into the loops of the towel and you'll actually see the loops pushing up through the stitching. So we want to have that topping to hold those loops down in place while we do our stitching. Next, we'll do all of the color changes that are any elements to the design. So here we're stitching the princess's face and her crown. It will be several color changes of your design. You can go ahead and tear away the aquafilm topping once you've stitched all of the interior elements of the design. Now the last color change is going to be a seam stitch. So before you stitch the seam stitch, you'll place another piece of your hand towel right sides together with the first piece. So you'll just layer those pieces right sides together. Then you'll stitch the final color change, which is a seam stitch. You can kind of see the outline of that stitch here. Next, you'll take the project out of the hoop and you'll cut a straight line across the bottom just below where the seam stitch is. Do be careful not to clip that seam stitch, but just below the seam stitch, you'll cut a straight line across. Then you'll cut about a quarter of an inch away from the seam stitch all the way around. Now you'll turn your bath mitt right side out. The final step is just to finish the bottom edge. Because this is a small opening for a small hand to use it for a bath mitt, turning it under to finish the edge would be pretty difficult. So instead, we're actually going to add a binding. To add your binding, you can either use a strip of fabric that's 2.5 inches by 10 inches, or you can use an extra wide double fold bias. You're going to place the fabric with the right sides together against your project and overlap it a little bit, about an inch. And here you can see one end of that finished edge of the binding has been folded under so that we can have a hem that does not show the raw edge of our binding. So just fold it under a little hem here. Now we're going to stitch all the way around with about a half inch seam allowance, sewing the binding to the opening of the mitt. Then we'll simply fold that whole thing down over the bottom of the mitt and then we'll tuck it back up into the inside of the mitt and fold under the raw edge. So we're folding under the raw edge and then we'll be able to stitch through all the layers 
that will hold everything in place and all the raw edges are enclosed. Here we've used a zigzag stitch, but you could also use a straight stitch or a decorative stitch if you wanted to. And your bath mitt's ready to go. We hope you enjoy making lots of these bath time fun projects. Remember that the full step-by-step -step instructions in a printable format and your supply list are included with your collection when you download it. Be sure to visit the links below to find the fun bath time fun collections featured in this video. This is Christy from OESD. Thanks for joining us.